recorded live. Everyone and welcome to Bluegrass Planet Radio. I'm your host, DJ Delta Dawn, and so glad to be here with you on this hump day. It's been a cold hump day, I will say that. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully, for many of you around the country, like myself today, it has been slightly warmer, like a balmy, what, 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. Uh, instead of it being minus 8, it's now, what, 10 degrees outside, you know. Um, it has just been a crazy cold snap. I'm telling you, I'm ready for spring and summer like nobody's business, and I know many of you are as well. Um, so glad to have you here with us this evening. I mean, if you can't get outside and do anything because it's too cold, I might as well listen to some great music and listen to our program, and we are so appreciative of that. If you're brand new tonight, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you here, and uh, we've got an incredible guest. I cannot wait to introduce her to you and bring her on. Um, she is a folk artist, and uh, I'm excited because we don't get to interview a lot of folk artists, but there's something about folk music that is just very charming and ethereal and nostalgic all in its same right. And um, and so we are just really excited that um, our guest is with us this evening, and she's going to be calling in momentarily. But while we're waiting for her to call in, I wanted to give you a little background on her. Um, so if you're not familiar with her, you can kind of know who she is um, before we launch into the interview. But um, our artist is – she's very good about crafting lyrics that evoke a vivid cast of characters. Um, this, her sound is acoustic and authentic, um, laced with banjo, lap steel, mandolin, and accordion accompanying her sepia tone songs and um, – just all the hints and traces of folk music, but infused with the great um, mountain sound, bluegrass sound. And um, she is also the granddaughter of Alan Freed, and many of you may remember Alan Freed as a legendary DJ who gave the world the phrase rock and roll. And uh, who has not said rock and roll in their lifetime? Alan Freed, her grandfather, is the uh, is the one who originated that. And she has a music publisher father and a rock archi- archivist mother, and uh, she pretty much grew up in the music business, so it's no surprise that the music bug probably bit her early on. And um, her latest project, which is just phenomenal, I just love this kind of music anyway, but it's called People I Know, and we're going to be playing a couple songs off of it um, later in the program uh, before we wrap and uh, and introduce her music to all of you. But I want to see if she's calling. No, we're still waiting for her to call in. So what I may do is just go ahead and play a song now. But one of... Um, one of her songs uh, that you're going to be hearing from her tonight is called Freedom Trotter, which is like the debut single off of this album, People I Know. And we'll also be playing a song called Last Chance Saloon. Both have been getting quite a bit of airplay in the indie world, so um, I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, our guest tonight is Nettie Rose, and uh, we are just so excited about having her with us and like I said we're waiting for her to call in now as a matter of fact on my cell it started ringing a second ago I have a feeling maybe her publicist was trying to call me so I'm going to go ahead and play these songs and see what's happening there and uh, try to get her on the line and then uh, we'll be back with you in just a few moments and I won't stop for nothing as I cross these barren lands Go on to Freedom Trotter, don't you let go of those reins, don't you even stop and pray to God to ease your hunger pain. It's a long way out of no man's land across those lonesome plains. So go on to Freedom Trotter. Don't you let go of those rays. Homeland, California, where I was born and raised. I will touch your migrant seas again. I know through your mountains I will run just like a curtain toward the sun. 
and like your rocky river, I will flow. I flow on, go on, freedom trotter. Don't you let go of those reins. Don't you even stop and pray to God to ease your hunger pain. It's a long way out of no man's land across those lonesome plains. So go on, freedom trotter, don't you let go of those grains. Nettie Rose and Freedom Trotter. And I have to tell you something. While I muted my mic a moment ago, I made a discovery that I did not even realize (laughs) was going on until a friend of mine who thanked the Lord is listening tonight. Um, When I muted my mic, I didn't realize the music was muted as well. Um, And I apologize for that. So what I'll do, I think we caught the last half. Anyone that's listening heard the last half of that song. So as a courtesy, at the end of the show, I will play it again in, in its entirety so we can hear the entire song. For any of you who were going, what is going on? Why am I not hearing anything? So I do apologize profusely for that. And I believe our guest, Nettie Rose, is on the line. So hello, Nettie. Hi there. How are you I'm good, and I hope you heard me just now saying I am so sorry. I didn't realize that people were not able to hear the first part of the song. When I put the, I put my mic on mute so that I could call your publicist because she had called me and didn't realize that it was muting the music. So I am so terribly sorry, but we're going to play it again before the show ends. Is that okay? That's so sweet of you, and don't worry about it. I had a little bit of confusion calling in. And I'm, I'm actually I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here, too, um, with my um, lead guitarist and co-writer, Fred Sokolo, um, banjo master and teacher. Um, so he, he's going to be here for a minute also to answer any questions you might have about my debut. And thank you so much for having me. Really well, appreciate it. It is such an honor, and thank you for being here this evening. I have, I was saying at the top of the show that um, I'm always excited when I get to in, interview a folk artist because there is just something about this style of music. I've, I've always been such a big bluegrass folk Americana fan anyway uh, because of where I was born and raised, which is in the heart of North Carolina. And music, that style of music is so prevalent here. And, and so, but I, there's something about folk music that is just very nostalgic and ethereal, and it's very charming. I mean, it's just, it's 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 such a an easygoing kind of sound, and uh, but yet the lyrics and the music is are always so deep. I mean, they take you on a journey every time. Yeah, well, folk music doesn't have to be uh, commercial or formulaic, you know. So it really comes from the heart usually. And in the real old folk music, there was never any hope of really making any serious money, so you just said whatever you felt like saying in your music. I think that's the same for bluegrass and folk music. It's it's all about what comes from the heart. It's not except for anything. It's not about anything but you know sharing with your friends and family and telling stories, which is why I love folk music so much. So I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, it's 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 such a real music, and it, I think it's the one style of music, the one genre that people can relate to the most. There's lots of music is relatable, and I've always said music as a whole is a universal language, but there's just something about that traditional rootsy get down to the root and heart of matters in folk music that you don't find in any other kind of music out there because it is just true to itself, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I think we would both agree, and that's why um, we, I found myself writing in this genre. Um, there were so many, there are so many genres you can go in as a young, um, as a young student, and um, that was just the one that appealed to me the most. And I think that learning songs like by Flat and Scruggs and um, Hank Williams early on, um, even though I branched off into many genres, I kept coming back to folk music and. Um, essentially, that's what Fred and I write together, and um, we also love country, bluegrass, and have lots of other influences as well. And I think that folk is an amazing genre because it almost encompasses uh, so many of the our roots in this country. You know, of mm-hmm. our oh, story. Yeah. Most thing, definitely. Another thing about Nettie's music is that the, her lyrics are are not slick, and they're you know they're often very gritty and tough and they really wouldn't be suited to real commercial pop, 
you know, type of stuff, whether it's pop country or or, or pop rock, you know. It, so a lot of times the Americana forms suit them a lot better, whether it's old timey or bluegrass or real old country and stuff like that. Well, I, that's one of the things I love about this album, uh, Nettie. It's just a wonderful project, and congratulations on the completion of it. It's, it is. It you know you really do get down to the nitty gritty in your lyrics, and um, and you know in a lot of ways, I think some mainstream formats wouldn't embrace it. But you know if you're a realist and you you love music for what it is and not for what it tries to be, then people are going to love you because of of the fact that you don't try to be somebody you're not. I mean, you can really tell that that comes through in your music. And uh, is that something that you genuinely strive for, or is that just kind of natural for you? Well, that's uh, that's really sweet of you to say. Thank you for the compliment about completing the album. It's certainly been a long time coming. In fact, the first song I wrote, Ride, 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 when I was 16, I wrote the music and lyrics to that, and from there... Fred and I started. Fred started writing some melodies on there as well, and it's really been a long time coming. And I think that um, I would agree with you about the the comes naturally part. I just I kind of see things for what they are. I'm I'm really observant. Um, these stories aren't necessarily my own. I just I try to keep my ears open and and I try to write every day. And I think that that's why that's why we called it um, people I know because it's just. Yeah you know, real or fake or whatever. It's just things that you know, things that are passed down, and that's um, that's about as real as you can get, I think, is the stories that are, you know, passed down and the, the music that was passed down to me by Fred um, really means a lot. Yeah. Now, Fred, talk a little bit about some of your musical experiences that you've been able to kind of incorporate into what Nettie does. Well, I've been involved in lots of different kinds of music, but one of the first kinds of music I got real serious about was bluegrass, and and after that, uh, along with that, actually the uh, real acoustic blues, you know, the old blues stuff from the 30s, and and uh, later on, I was in in the 60s, I was in you know rock, an original rock band that was in the Bay Area, so I you know I I really I moved around a lot, and then after that, into I moved into old swing and sort of old Americana jazz stuff, so. I've done a lot of these different things, but um, but one of the things that really reaches me is music from the 30s and 40s and on into the 50s, and and uh, we try to incorporate a lot of those sounds in Nettie's music, and I think it really fits, uh, you know, the character of her lyrics a lot. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, Nettie, you have such a a wonderful voice, I mean, that just fits the style of music, but it is a great compliment to the music that you write um, and that you're trying to put out because, um, you know, it, it, your style and everything about it just kind of takes you back on a journey, as Fred was just speaking about, of, of days gone by, so to speak. And, um, and I think that's kind of become lost in music today, and it's so refreshing to see an artist like yourself that's trying to kind of reinvent that and bring that back, if you will. Um, I, I really, I mean, I think that you have to, you have that right, and I also think that if for for me, it wasn't a matter of bringing it back because I grew up with around this kind of music, and it also always kind of came. It was always like what they would call a no brainer, like of mm-hmm. course Hank Williams, Latin Scruggs, it's just Bob Dylan, Phil Oaks, you know, going into the '60s and Joan Baez, and um, that that was just kind of unquestionable for me even as a young teenager even when I got into other styles it was um just really I I feel like that there are genres that are lasting no matter what else comes out or what becomes popular you know and um that was just always what I enjoyed besides bringing those musical influences to the into the mix with her lyrics she's bringing in all kinds of classical stuff you know Shakespeare and the French poets and the you know, last century before this one, and, and uh, she really soaked up a lot of influences, and I think it comes across in her in her songs. Oh, most definitely, and and you know, another thing that is pretty much a no brainer, I think, if anybody knows anything about your background, Eddie, is the fact that you know you you've grown up around music pretty much. I mean, having musical parents and and um, you know being the granddaughter of Alan Freed, I mean, you had so much influence right there at home, so to speak, you know, to draw from as well, and um, and 
one thing about that I'm curious about, because I've always lived on the East Coast. I grew up in North Carolina. So, you know, I've, I've always been interested to know on the West Coast, you know, how big is like folk music, bluegrass and, and Americana? As, I mean, I know it's rampant here on this side of the world. So is it as, is it as big out there as it is here? Well, I'm going to oh, just to say something quickly. I'm not. I, I I don't really know. I think Fred would actually answer that question better as a teacher of that prominently on the West Coast. Do you have any thoughts on that, Fred? Well, there's there's always yeah. Ever since the early '60s, there's been a big presence of of bluegrass and folk stuff in in Southern California and all up and down the West Coast. Um, yeah, especially in in Los Angeles and in the Bay Area, and then later on up in in Seattle and Portland. There's a, there's a lot of people that love that kind of music and a lot of Players and uh, gee, a lot of people that are uh, important Nashville players started out playing bluegrass here on the West Coast. Vince Gill comes to mind, and I know there's there's some other ones. Um, so yeah, it's it's bluegrass. Oddly enough, has been ever since about the early '60s has been had a real important presence in in California. And I think agriculture, like historically speaking, has a lot to do with that. I mean, we have we distribute so much of the food in this country. And I think people, when they think of California, they often think of where I live, ironically, Hollywood. Santa Monica, Hollywood. <laughs> but there's, the rest of California is pretty rural, and they wouldn't necessarily identify with Los Angeles or San Francisco necessarily, you know. And um, <laughs> definitely have the opportunity to live in other places in California, um, aside from Santa Monica, like um, Big Bear and Ojai. Um, it's, just, it's, a, it's really a beautiful state with a lot going on, you know. And and uh, thank you so much for sharing it because you know I'm I'm kind of one of those folks that I've been to California. I went to San Francisco years and years ago. Visited there on a business trip, and um, that was as far into California as I got. And you know when you oftentimes I think a lot of people when they think of California they're thinking about L.A. or you know Hollywood and and some of the more well known places and and they tend to that overshadows some of the the great history rich history of California as a whole. Um, the state versus California where majority of celebrities and, and people of interest live kind of thing. Um, so, you know, that is, that's very interesting to note. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that. And um, your, your album, people I know, I mean, as I said earlier, it's just, it's such a great album and it's such a, when I listened to it for the first time, I got kind of that Joan Baez vibe. I felt like I was kind of in, the 60s, and I was listening to this really great music that um, just kind of took me on a journey, and I could see all the scenery playing out in my head as I was listening to it. Do you have a particular song on the album that is just your personal favorite? Um, my personal favorite on the album, it just, I, gosh, that's a really hard question. I haven't really thought about that. Um, I really like Last Chance Saloon. I think that that's my favorite. Um, it was, it's just, it's just the way that I wrote it lyrically in, in one sitting. Um, that was just as a, like personally, that was, I felt like that was an accomplishment because usually it takes me, you know, a, a little while to put a song together. And also I, I felt like Fred's banjo part, it just suited it so well. It's just so mysterious. It's a real haunting kind of old-timey sound, and it really fits the lyric in a nice way. Well, it, it, it was hard for me to pick a favorite, but I love that one as well. Um, and uh, we're going to be playing it a little bit later on the, the program before we close the show. Um, it, just I, lo- I just love this album. And being that we're in a new year and this album is, is – um, is out there and in the mix. What plans do you have to promote it this year? Are you going on tour, um, or what do you have coming up? Well, I don't. I don't really have a tour plan to be honest. Um, I'm I'm an unsigned artist. I'm kind of just going with the breeze at the moment. You know, I have no no management, no representation. I just I I play a club here in L.A. called the Wits End in Venice, which mm-hmm. is near my house. And um, you know, I used to. I used to play, and there would be, like, two people coming to my shows. I was, like, a club owner's worst nightmare. Um, and then, you know, over time, I'm just, like, I love my fan base so much. They just they come to every show. And I went from having two people to the last show was about 60-plus, which for me, 
without any of the, you know, bells and whistles. I mean, now I have a wonderful um, PR company, which is helping me as of this year. But, I mean, it was it's really tough. I know that all the musicians listening out there can relate. Um, when you don't, you just have that representation, and it, it can be difficult. But, you know, I'm just, I, I just try to promote it from my heart. You know, I'm just, I, I just, um, just taking a lot of interviews and just trying to get it around as much as I can. Nettie's playing around a lot, all the clubs around here, around L.A., and when we go to Nashville to record, she's played in some of the Nashville clubs and always gets really good reviews there, too. Yeah, the last, right. last time when I played the Billy Block show in Nashville, I got some great reviews, and it was just, it's always, it's a, I mean, not to brag, but we put on a really fun show. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. Um, I, I play with a, I have a stand-up bass player, and um, Fred's wife, Lynn, who's also in a wonderful um, band, plays the banjo, and we just, we're like a, a family on stage, which I think is really important to bring to a live performance, and, and like you said, lost these days we try to keep it real as possible you know mhm mhm well i i can just tell you that you know at one time every single well known artist in the world started out right where you are i mean they were playing their local clubs and were trying really hard to get their music out there and and i believe the more people hear your music the more they're going to want to hear it because you're the kind of artist that especially people love this style of music because as we were saying earlier it's just so real and i know in our in my neck of the woods um you know there's a lot of bluegrass festivals um in the state of north carolina and all these major bluegrass acts will come and they're performing one of the great charming features about those festivals is that you know the artists are not like a lot of mainstream artists from other genres they'll come off stage and sit down and have a meal with folks and just mix and mingle and talk and the camaraderie is so incredible and and that's i think one of the incredible you know, appeals of folk music, Americana, bluegrass, all of that, because the people who perform really are real and they don't try to be somebody they're not. You know, they don't try to be larger than life. They're just on the level of the fans and they're so appreciative of the fans that support them and their music. And and that's one of the reasons why I love this genre more than any other genre out there because of that in itself. Um, just what the artists give back, the collaborative efforts with among artists and and um you know and and I believe as people hear your music they're just they're gonna be drawn to you naturally because of the style that you've produced. Um, I mean I just I did when I heard your album for the first time I was immediately hooked. I was like, wow, I hope she comes to oh, North Carolina. <laughs> I mean honestly when 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 one it's funny you're from North Carolina too because one of this track um to the West um, I wrote about my friend because about she was living in Asheville and she like you know essentially stuck out her thumb and went home, back home to California because she was so you know she missed it so much you know and it just but um, it's it I love I love the I mean I I go to Tennessee I've been to North Carolina and you know it's just a it's it's a great part of the world and I actually like I need I almost need to go to that. Just there to to clear my head out, you know, because <laughs> you know it's. I do live in Los Angeles. I don't, you know, it's it's not it's not everywhere folk music here. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, yeah. So it's just that's where that's to me that's um that's where the roots are. Yeah, and and Fred, I just have to ask you, what would you like to see happen for Nettie as as she continues along um in her musical journey? Um, that's. I mean, I would just love, I would like, like, like people like yourself telling me when I listen to your music, I'm happy and I enjoy it. That, that honestly means most to me. I mean, everybody would like to, to make a career doing what they love. But yeah. if I could just, you know, go on in my life and just know that I made an album, you know, back then wrote that affected people and made them happy, that's really all that I, that I really want. I know that seems cheesy, but I just can't think of anything else that means more to me. Well, and, you know, and, and I've often said that that's one thing I love about indie artists is that, you know, your heart and soul goes into everything that you do. And and I think from a listener perspective, um, listeners are really getting um, just the best work possible that indies are putting out and uh, because you, you feel it. I mean, it's in the music and it's not packaged and it's not made and, you know, and it's, it's really true. And, and I think people, one of the biggest reasons why 
indie music and music that you are making is is really drawing so many people to it is because you know it is real and it's there is no pretension about it and i mean there's nothing rude about it i mean you turn on regular radio every day and you hear the same 10 songs over and over there is so much variety in the indie music world now um and people are loving it because it's it's you, yeah, know, you that, never get you never get tired of what you're hearing and you're always discovering something new i guess that's the best way to put it yeah i agree and you know there's nothing you know i there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with mainstream radio. You know, it has its own charm and its own its own place. I've always, you know, I I just I just couldn't be that kind of an artist, even if I tried. I think it would yeah. look, I think it would look really funny. That's a hat that would look very funny on me. But um, I just I think you just got to do what you, what you were born to do. You know, and mm-hmm. a lot of people when they don't fit the mold, you have to kind of do your own thing and just own it and say, this is me. And um, that's why I'm always telling people, you know, these aren't necessarily my stories, you know, just because this is folk or, you know, sentimental music, you know, it's not, I write about all kinds of things, you know, it's not, the experience isn't, you know, the only inspiration. This is such a big world. And, you know, being from Santa Monica, especially, it's like, yeah. there's, there seems to be so much more. Um, to me, and that's what I try to write in my music. I try to bring, you know, as much as I can into it. As much uh, try to encompass as much as I can. Well, Nettie, I'm I'm very excited for what uh, we are going to see happen for you this year and beyond. I, I really think that some great things and some doors are going to open. Um, and you know, as more people hear your music there and get to know who you are as an artist. Um, that's just going to draw more people in. And I can tell you from our standpoint here on the show, we'll do everything we can to help get your music out there, have it be heard and, and promote it and play it um, so that, you know, to our audience as much as possible so that people can, you know, really get a feel for who you are as an artist. And, and um, anytime you have anything new coming out, let us know. We'd be happy to, to play it and represent it here on the show. So that, I mean, that means so much to me that you'd say that um, it's just, if I was making this music just for myself, I'd just, you know, keep it in my in my computer right. and my whatever, and I would just keep it away. But you know, I'm sharing it because I want I want people to hear it and I want people to I want people to play it. I want people to sing it. You know, I want I want you know I, I tried to write songs that you know people could could play themselves as well because honestly, if there's something, my influences were so important to me, like playing their music and playing traditional folk music was such an inspiration to me. And I just want to, I wanted to, from a young age, I wanted to inspire people the same way. So the fact that you would, you know, help me promote it um, extends my reach to be able to do that. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome, and it'll be our honor to do so. Well, Nettie, thank you so much for being our guest this evening and and spending a little time with us to talk about your music and people I know. And it's just a phenomenal album. And um, we're going to play a couple songs from that before we close our show. But thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we'd love to have you back anytime that you have a new project or anything new that you want to share with the listeners. Um, We're happy to, to have you on. So please let us know. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, it's I, I just recorded, you know, some new songs done in Nashville um, with an incredible producer, and I'm looking forward, you know, just keep on moving, you know. I I just would love to keep sharing my music with you guys, and you're just, you are so sweet. Um, You're just the... I would love to have a coffee with you, you know. <laughs> I know. Great. Well, I may have to, if you're ever in North Carolina or if I'm ever out in California, then we'll just have to make a point to do that because I love coffee. As a matter of fact, I'm drinking some right now. So <laughs> well, while we're so. on this, let's cool do that. Shop. Let's plan for it. That would be awesome. I'll take you to my favorite coffee shop when you come visit, okay? All right. You got it. That We got a deal. Well, thank you so much, Nettie, for being with us and look forward to speaking with you again in the very near future. I'm looking forward to it, too. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You know, I really enjoy interviews like this. Um, she's just such a sweet person, and and her, I love her music. And uh, it, it's artists like her that really make me believe in indie music all the more because um, not only do I know that, you know, she believes in what she's doing, but 
when you hear her music, you know she does, and you know she's put everything she has into it, and it just really is, it comes through. Um, so before we close our show tonight, we're going to play a couple songs off of her album, People I Know, and uh, believe me, you're going to enjoy that. But before I do that, I want to give you all of her social media uh, info so that you can check her out uh, anytime you like. Um, her website is nettyrose.com. And you can also find her on Facebook at Nettie Rose Music and also on Twitter at Nettie Rose Music. And I would implore you to follow her and like her Facebook page. Go visit her website because that is where you can check out everything that's going to be going on with her when she has new music coming out. And uh, if you're a folk music fan, you're going to love Nettie Rose because um, – she really has hit all the marks and then some on this latest project. Um, so we want to extend a huge thank you to her for being our special guest this evening and many thanks to all of you for tuning in. And again, if you're brand new to our program, welcome aboard. We're so glad that you chose tonight to um, check us out and we hope that you'll be back again in the very near future. So as we close our show tonight, we're going to play a couple tunes off of her latest release. Uh, first up, we will be replaying now Freedom Trotter in its entirety without it being muted. Um, again, I apologize for that and then um i i wasn't going to play this song but when she brought it up and said she wrote it about a friend that lived in north carolina i decided to include it at last minute to the west and then we will close with last chance saloon so without further ado here is Nettie rose from the people i know um album and uh take care of you all everyone have a great night all god bless good night
and trotter. Don't you let go of those reins. Don't you even stop and pray to God to ease your hunger pain. It's a long way out of no man's land across those lonesome plains. So go on, freedom trotter. Don't you let go of those grains. Paper sack, he's got a guard up hand, he's got a long black eye, he turns his pirate green up to that British ghost guy. He's got a Get that 
Cause their eyes to moonshine are named Bill. I just smiled sadly, saved my boots slip from the still. I fell down into the street, two stories on my head. And somehow I survived it, but I still wish I was dead. As I gazed at the water and a sleepy rocking boat. I wondered if I were to drown with my soul day of load. Lord Jesus, come and lift me up above this foggy sky. Oh, would he lead me here to Rome and then never to die? If I could chop a mighty tree, oh, it struck me. Then let me sail so far away, never to be seen. For I Roam a hundred miles so far and wide where my troubles and my worries blues would never find me there. I walked along the lonely dock to where the sea turned black. I raised my arms above my head and fell in with a smack. I didn't try to hold my breath. I let myself go down. I didn't even struggle, no, I just began to drown. Now I am the fog that flows across the open sea. Beside the old last dance saloon is where you will find me. Drifting across the lonesome bay, a wanderer of gold. Condemned to roam forever, all along this wild coast. If I could chop a mighty tree, I'll always drop me. Then I'll let me sail far away, never to be seen. For I would roam a hundred miles so far and wide where my shoes and my worry blues would never find me there. You've been listening to Bluegrass Planet Radio. Find us on the web at bluegrassplanetradio.com, on Twitter at Bluegrass Planet, and on Facebook at Bluegrass Planet Radio. Thank you for joining us.